Most of the time, Jolteon's Volt Absorbing, but what if we used its other neglected ability, Quick Feet? Quick Feet boosts speed by 50% when it has a status condition, and we can toss on a Flame Orb to immediately give this thing a built-in Choice Scarf without locking into moves, and this also frees up speed EV investment that we can put into bulk. With its base 110 special attack and insane natural speed at 130, Spiky Boy can do some damage. We can set up with Calm Mind to boost special attack and special defense, and with Feet this quick we're faster than pretty much everything. Stab Thunderbolt hits like a truck, and we can also use Terra Blast Ice to cover for defensive checks. Jolteon's generally pretty predictable, and this is kind of just a dumb idea, but using Quick Feet, we can actually switch it up a bit for the sake of surprise, and also, why not? Alright, there's certain Pokemon like Jolteon, for example. When you look at this thing, you just think Volt Absorb, and then you realize, hold on a second, there's some Quick Feet to be played with. I mean... I mean, don't, don't play with his feet. I mean, I guess it depends on what you're into, but moral of the story, I like to mess around with Pokemon that do things that aren't kind of out of the ordinary. I've already messed up the intro enough, but moral of the story, if you're into Pokemon doing weird stuff, you should probably subscribe, because that is what we're into around here. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. So I kind of expected my opponent to lead off with the Glamora, but instead, they actually toss out the Braviary, which when I lead off with the Swampert, I'm here to set up my Stealth Rock, and this thing is probably a Defogger. But I'm just gonna set up some Stealth Rock anyway. If you wanna blow them away, that is fine with me. I do set up that Stealth Rock as I move first. And it turns out this thing is just gonna go for the Whirlwind. He says, I am gonna try again. Go ahead and throw something else out there. And then Swampert is like, see ya. It's actually kind of fine with me. As it actually ends up dragging in just the perfect fella, it's gonna be our little spiky friend, the Jolteon here. So the good thing about Jolteon being kind of dragged in freely is that it activates my Flame Orb immediately. And now I don't have to worry about hard switching this thing into something and trying to get that flame orb to activate to outspeed anything that has like a choice scarf or anything like that. So, of course, I figure, you know, Braviary could stay in and go for another whirl whirlwind depending on you know, how big this man's balls are. So, I, I kind of figure they probably just swap out and I can just get a free turn to go for the Calm Mind. And they actually end up bringing in the Swampert of their own. And this thing is a little bit of a problem. Of course, Jolteon, you know, getting up that Calm Mind... I, I still can't really touch this thing at all, and I feel like they probably know that, so it's more than likely that the Swampert here is just going to set up the Stealth Rock of their own. However, I feel like if I can predict that Stealth Rock turn correctly, I can actually grab myself a second Calm Mind, and this Jolteon is super unique in that I'm going to decide to go for the Terra Ice. That's going to cover for a lot of their team offensively, but also defensively on my side, it's going to allow me to take at least one Earthquake here. So if they want to Earthquake turn one, I, this thing is, again, unique in that I don't have max speed. That quick feat allows me to be faster than I would normally anyway, while also having a ton of HP. So, I go for that Calm Mind here. I'm now setting up plus two special attack and special defense, and it, we are extremely fast. Honestly, looking pretty scary, especially because they do just go for that Stealth Rock on this turn. So, that gives me essentially a free turn, knowing that a Terra Blast Ice is probably not going to be enough to take care of this thing, uh, kind of depending on how it's built. I do know that with that HP that I didn't have to put into speed, I should be able to still at least live in Earthquake, and then start to tear some stuff up on the team, because again, I'm quick, and with two combines especially, we're hitting real hard. So, that Terra Blast is going to do a nice little chunk of damage, they do fire off the Earthquake, which does bring me down pretty low, but uh, honestly, we're still feeling pretty safe, because on each turn, we're going to take about 10 HP damage, brings us down to 31, and I've got some solid attack left in me, and... This is exactly what this Jolteon is built to do. So I can now just go for it, another Terra Blast. They're actually going to go ahead and make the switch into the Tinkaton, who of course does resist the ice, and the uh, homegirl with the hammer is actually going to be pretty... This thing is pretty naturally especially defensive anyway, but the good thing is it's, it's still going to hit pretty hard. So Terra Blast is going to bring it down to around half, which is fine by me. I know that a Thunderbolt at this range definitely takes care of it, plus... As I get knocked down to 21 here, I know that I can definitely, I can have two more attacks left in me. So, I can then finish this thing off with the Thunderbolt, as they actually do not swap back into the Swampert. Probably just didn't want to risk me going for something else and then wasting the Swampert, but that takes care of the Tink, and honestly, that thing is pretty annoying, and glad to see that fella gone. So, I take some more Burn Chip, because I am, in fact, a burnt little snowflake over here, and this is going to allow them to go into the Meowskarada. So, the thing about Meowskarada is... I am still indeed faster without having any speed investment and being modest. I can actually outrun this thing and go for that Terra Blast. Buddy is, has doubted the quickness of these feats, and that is going to take care 
uh, of the Masquerada, who uh, could have been a damn problem later on, so we love to see it. Also, we actually end up living the burn with 1 HP, which is like the most satisfying thing ever, and that means that uh, unless they have any priority, which it, it doesn't look like they have any in the back, something is gonna likely die. So they decide now to go into the Glamora, and uh, I obviously just have a nice little neutral Thunderbolt, and uh, this thing it does not have any priority, and that is gonna be a very dead flower who did not have the opportunity to set up any toxic spikes. And honestly, Jolteon is just out here putting in the finest of work, basically just punching holes in the team to make our late game more manageable. So I do sadly go down to that burn chip, which is mostly fine, and uh, I do lose the Terra with it. So proud of Jolteon being able to do what it did, and now we gotta try to see if we can finish it off. So they actually have they have three Pokemon left. It is gonna be the Braviary, the Garchomp, and the Swampert who's not doing too hot. So we have an empty battlefield. I decide to go into Old Long Neck over here. They're gonna end up bringing back in the bird. And uh, I actually do get the Frisk off to reveal the Charty Berry. That is a uh, rock resistant berry. So kind of interesting to know. And we just feel them up. I'm like, sir, what is this you have in your pocket? It's the, it's, it turns out it's just a Charty Berry. So we still let them through, but Here's the funny part, they actually end up going for the defog, it's gonna get rid of the stealth rock, and not only that, but it's actually gonna activate my eject pack, and that uh, is able to switch me out whenever a stat is lowered, and since my evasiveness went down, I now have to switch out, which is kind of ridiculous, it's mostly just there so that when I go for a Draco Meteor, uh, the special attack drop switches me out, and then I can get Jolteon in on a free turn, but uh, it's fine, it ends up, I open up the door for me to bring in the Gumshoes, who can actually do more damage with an adaptability body slam, but my choice car fast, I really wanted to lock myself into an ice punch just so that I could then try to get the most satisfying ice punch against a Garchomp in the back, but it doesn't have enough damage to kill, which is annoying, and Gumshoes is literally just ass, but it, I wanted to try to get him to do something and it didn't happen, so <laughs> it kind of sucks. Uh, as they finish me off with the superpower, that's mostly fine because this little snowflake fella is actually pretty positioned, it's positioned really well for the remainder of the match because I can outspeed, take care of the Braviary because this, for whatever reason, is actually pretty damn quick without even any investment. And now, with freeze dry, we're looking like we're going to uh, start up a nice little freeze dried candy shop up in this hole. I can go for a freeze dry against the Swampert. Of course, that is going to take care of it because we did get some nice chip earlier you know, with that Terra Blast from Jolteon. Shout out to the dude. And now the final Pokemon is going to be the Garchomp. So the problem is Garchomp has potential to be very scary. Also, they still have the Terra in the back pocket, so they're gonna end up busting that thing out. They obviously do not want to take a freeze dry. And as they go for the Terra, it turns out it's actually gonna be Terra Water, which is interesting because it now you know gets rid of the four times weakness to the ice move, but instead I still have a super effective hit with a freeze dry. So as they actually outspeed they go for the Rock Tomb, which tells me this is definitely going to be like a rough skin, rocky helmet, just more uh, kind of utility fella rather than like a setup set. So the Freeze Dry is unfortunately not quite enough to take care of this thing, as one more Rock Tomb is going to demolish my Snowflake. So uh, luckily though, we were able to get enough chip onto this to where I can go ahead and bust out the slitheriest little fella with the Choice Banded first impression. And it is our main goal to now just make a, a good first impression on the guy. Hopefully he likes me, probably not, because that is in fact just going to go ahead and kill the Garchomp. And that is going to be the end of the game. So I thought Jolteon uh, was super fun to see in this game, doing some, some shenanigans. Honestly, just Calm Mind in general, set up Jolteon is an absolute beast. So that's going to take care of the Chomp. I thought that was just an interesting game I had a lot of fun with. But with that, that's going to bring us into game number two. So this time we have another really cool matchup. They have some obvious big threats like the Gliscor, they have a Iron Valiant, there's even a Zorark over there, so you never know what the hell's gonna be happening. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this time I'm not really sure what they wanna lead off with. And as they do toss out the Belly Bolt, I'm kinda like, is that really gonna be Belly Bolt? A lot of the time it's gonna be a Hisuian Zorark with the potential to go for some nasty plots and just be a menace. So of course Azoth's gonna hit him with a nice little spin and throw some stealth rock out there. And it's time to see what this little fella is all about. Turns out, it actually is the belly bolt because they go for the thunderbolts. And uh, it is gonna do, of course, a whole bunch of damage. And at this point, I don't really have a lot of, honestly, I can't deal with this belly bolt super well. So I just decide to stay and go for that Psy Shock. Sadly, it is gonna give it uh, Electromorphosis, which actually doesn't really matter, but uh, I can pop its balloon and then it finishes me with the thunderbolt. So sometimes Azelf comes out and just dies. <laughs> that is what it is. I set up the stealth rock, got a little bit of damage on the guy, 
And at this point, I gotta figure out kind of what my answer is to this thing. Again, Belly Bolt is kind of a monster here, which is probably not said that often, but it is. So, I decide to go into the Jolteon, just because I feel like they probably swap here. It kind of looks like we don't really have a good matchup against each other. And as I go for the Calm Mind, I figure it's just kind of some free setup here, and I'll definitely take it. So, it turns out they're actually just gonna end up going for the Slack Off, and uh, that sucks, because <laughs> that's just gonna bring it back to full HP, and as I do activate my Quick Feet, it, it kind of reveals what this Jolteon is all about. So, I decide, you know, this thing still can't really touch me, and I'm free to basically set up as many Calm Minds as I want. So, I'm gonna go for a second one here, as they're actually gonna end up bringing in the Gliscor. And again, while that does you know, definitely wall the Jolteon, the Terra, Jolteon, long gone are the days where Jolteon used to run, you know, Hidden Power Ice to cover for things like Gliscor, but now we can basically have a better Hidden Power in friggin' Terra Blast with uh, Terra Ice. It's gonna be really good coverage against a lot of checks to the Jolteon. So, of course, this asshole comes in, gets his Poison Orb. I mean, I have a Flame Orb, so I guess I'm kind of also a dick, but... Uh, I'm not poison heal. This thing is so annoying. So I do just decide to commit the Terra. I'm gonna go for that Terra Blast. It's more than likely they go for Protect because the average Gliscor just clicks Protect a thousand times. So <laughs> I'm just gonna go for that Terra Blast regardless and it is gonna kind of reveal what we're all about. Turns out they do not Protect, however, and that is gonna absolutely blast this bitch into the Shadow Realm and that is gonna be a dead Gliscor. So I now have, again, two Calm Minds and I've got my Terra out. And we are faster than everything they have. So it's kind of like Jolteon is positioned once again where stuff is going to take some damage. And it's always really fun. So they decide to go into the Araquanid. Or at least you think it's going to be. It, it totally looks like it. And uh, judging by that Stealth Rock chip though, we do know that this is actually going to be the Zorark. Because, you know, Araquanid being weak to Stealth Rock would take more than that. Regardless though, I do outspeed whatever they got and reveal that the Zorark is just going to get his ass blasted by a Thunderbolt. So that's actually just going to take care of the guy. That's always good to see because whenever Hisuian Zorark is around, you know, there's some you know, some shenanigans afoot. So that takes care of it. We are taking some more burn chip, which is totally fine. And now they decide to go into the Hydrapple. So this is a situation where ordinarily I would love to try to call out a Terra because obviously they've seen I'm Ice type. They do not want to take an Ice move but uh, they're probably more than likely gonna go for the Terra Steel. And as much as I want to click a Thunderbolt, I realize a Terra Ice Blast probably isn't two hit KO anyway. So I just go for my safest move here. They do bust out the Terra Steel, which is pretty much what every Hydrapple is gonna be working with these days. And I can get that Terra Blast off. At least if it's not a two hit KO, a Thunderbolt finishes it off next turn. Plus with two Calm Minds, I know that I can take any, any attack this thing wants to throw at me. A, even a Terra Steel Terra Blast. So, throws a fucking massive steel rock at my face, but again, with two Calm Minds up, we take that super nicely. And uh, max HP Jolteon with doubled special defense is not to be played with. So now, I can just go for a Thunderbolt here, and that is gonna take care of the Hydrapple. And Buddy is running out of options, because it just turns out, once, you, especially once you use your Terra, the options are getting slim out here. So, Zorak being gone is great. Terra being gone is great. Don't have to worry about too many surprises here. And they decide to, on the revenge switch, go back into the Belly Bolt. Now, this thing is, again, still at full HP, looking like a menace. And after that Stealth Rock chip, it's actually, it's a pretty close call on whether or not a Terra Blast takes care of it. It's my highest damage at this point. And so, anyway, I just started blasting. I go for the Terra Ice Blast and uh, freeze his ass into the Ice Age, but it actually lives it with one HP. Quite literally, lives on one, which is wildly unfortunate, but it does now allow them to go for that Volt Switch, uh, because obviously I'm not Volt Absorbed. It actually would have been hilarious if I was just Flame Orb to bluff the Quick Feed, <laughs> and then just absorb that Volt Absorb. Got, buddy would have been so damn confused, but that takes care of the Jolteon, and now we do still have a little bit of work cut out for us, as they do still have three Mons left. So. As they go into the Araquanid, this is obviously the actual one, takes 25% from that Stealth Rock chip. And I'm feeling like, hold on, this is actually a perfect opportunity to get the Weak Armor Skarmory to show why this thing is superior to the boring Stall Skarmory. Because I know that this thing has to fit me with a physical attack. With my physical defense, naturally, I know that I can take a liquidation from this thing. And it's also going to allow me to set up a free Sword Stance. Because as I set up that Sword Stance, I now have doubled attack. They do hit me with that water bubble boosted liquidation that doesn't even do half, but more importantly, it activates my weak armor ability, now doubling my speed, and I am faster than anything on their side, barring if the Iron Valiant is a speed boost booster energy, because 
That thing is still quick as hell. But I can go for the drill pack, which does take care of the spider. And now as they bring in the Chromas Valiant, it kind of just depends on what booster energy this is going to get. It does actually have that booster energy. And I'm like, well, Quark Drive actually ends up boosting its attack, which means that now Skarmory is going to be zooming out here on this thing. I have two different super effective options, and I just decide to drill peck his ass, and that is going to take care of it. So, with that, the final mod, of course, is Belly Bolt on 1 HP, but guess what? Stealth Rock strikes again, and he just saves him from being drill run into the ground. So, that is going to finish off the game. Always fun to get weak armor Skarmory uh, to surprise some folks. Honestly, this team is kind of just full of abilities that... These mods don't usually run, which I think is fun. So that is going to do it. And with that, that is going to bring us into the bonus match. Listen, these feet are still quick and there's still some fun to be had with it. So with this one, we have uh, another really, honestly, pretty unique team here. And let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. So this time, Homegirl is rocking the freshest haircut I've ever seen and also decides to send out the Gardevoir lead. So as this thing is going to trace my Levitate, which doesn't really matter, I kind of imagine that uh, a lot of the Gardevoirs I see are going to be Choice Scarf. And as I go for my Stealth Rock here, they actually outspeed and go for that Moon Blast, which I can guarantee I live with my Focus Sash anyway. But as I do live, that just is going to tell me this thing is definitely Choice Scarf. It doesn't naturally outspeed Azelf. And that gives me a lot of good info on kind of what this Gardevoir is working with. So... Knowing that they are also just locked into Moonblast, I don't really have a reason to stay in here and just sack the Azelf, so I can get a nice little free switch into the Scizor, and then trying to play a few turns ahead, look at what their switch ins are to Scizor, and try to make some moves here. So, obviously, I take the Moonblast, no problem, and I'm just going to end up going for the knockoff. They're definitely going to bring in a defensive switch in, nothing wants to deal with, uh, or at least Gardevoir does not want to deal with a bullet punch, so... They decide to go into Milotic here. I mean, Milotic is generally a pretty good check. As I go for that knockoff, it is going to actually end up getting rid of the Flame Orbs. So that also tells me that this thing is built to just be a defensive menace, Milotic, and I don't have to worry about any crazy, you know, kind of like a coil set or anything like that. So, getting rid of that Flame Orb is nice because it doesn't give it the opportunity to get burnt and then activate its Marvel Scale, which gives it a defensive boost. So, as I decide to switch into Azelf, it's kind of a middle ground play on whether it ends up being a sack, or if they recover, they just get back to full. But now, I do have the coverage with an energy ball, and I can bring it, hey, right back pretty much to where he was chilling, and he's just around half, which is good for me. So, as they do finish me with a Scald, that's kind of nice for me, because it does at least set me up in a position of, like, momentum, to where now, I can decide to go into whatever I want, and honestly, it's Jolteon time, baby. We're about to be squanching over here, and it seems like a good opportunity to set up a combine on now they do have some defensive checks to jolteon mainly things like that hydrapple but especially with our terra option we are not afraid of that at all so as i go for this combine they are actually going to end up bringing in the hydrapple honestly i do i do enjoy the uh the defensive core of hydrapple and uh milotic it's pretty pretty hard to break in general however jolteon is here to do two things, have quick feet and not give a shit, and we're doing both at the same time, because now with the Calm Mind, I do get my Flame Orb activated, not that I need the speed to be able to be faster than Hydrapple, but I can now just go for that Terra Ice, and it, it kind of depends on if they're going to call this Terra, you know, the Terra Ice is the most obvious for Jolteon right now, but if they want to go ahead and commit the Terra Steel, it's fine, because especially with the Calm Mind, I know that I can take an attack from it. So, once again, we are Snowflake Jolteon. They do not end up going for the Terra of their own. And the four times weak, it doesn't even matter if they're Assault Vest with a Calm Mind, Modest, Max Special Attack, Terror Blast is going to take care of it. So, down goes the Hydrapple, which is always good to see. Again, Hydrapple is uh, just defensive and can hit hard depending on how its Fickle Beams are feeling that day. So, uh, now they get a Revenge Switch in and they can go into whatever they like. Now, as they think about it, they decide... The Infernape is kind of going to be the best bet here, and that's because I imagine they have the priority in the form of Mach Punch, which ordinarily, being a super effective hit, probably takes care of Jolteon. However, I do have that max HP, not invested in speed. I'm able to barely hang on and then finish it off with a Thunderbolt. So we've now taken care of both the Hydrapple and the Infernape, and that seemed like their only priority option. And that is fantastic because with this quick feat, we are still faster than everything they've got even going to be faster than this Choice Scarf Gardevoir. They go into this thing, which is going to actually trace my Quick Feet, which is fine with me. Not going to be able to take advantage of that. But again, even this thing being Choice Scarf, I can still outspeed because these feet are running quick as hell. I go for a plus one Thunderbolt, 
But sadly, Gardevoir just has way too much special defense. What is it? This thing is like base 115 spadef. And that sadly gives it just enough bulk to be able to live a Thunderbolt. I was trying to get myself up to plus two if the opportunity was there, just so that it would be extra satisfying outspeeding the Scarf Gardevoir and then killing it. But we did at least get enough chip on it to the point uh, where I'm feeling pretty good, and we've kind of crippled the, the squad here. So I now decide to, on the Revenge Switch, go into the Bruxish. And that's just because I know a Psychic Fangs definitely kills from this range, plus they're locked into the Mystical Fire. And even their defensive switch in being Melotic at already almost half HP is not going to enjoy a choice banded Psychic Fangs. I'm telling you, this thing does way more damage, especially with the band, than people expect. The strong job boosted stab Psychic Fangs takes care of that. And now they are down to three Mons left. So they do still have the Scarf Gardevoir. And they also have this thing. Rev of Room late game is always honestly pretty scary. With that ability to uh, get super fast with Shift Gear, this thing can be a late game Mimis, but the problem about it is, as they go for the Terra Fire, uh, Bruxish is actually just a few, literally two points faster in terms of base speed. So, unless they're Choice Scarf, they outspeed me, but I do outspeed, and Choice Band Psychic Fangs does take care of it. So, that's gonna knock out the engine, and now, with two Mons left, Bruxish is on an absolute little, little, little tear here. And as they go into the Dawn Fan, I am stuck into the Psychic Fangs, but with what I have left, I can pretty much just clean up the game with uh, pretty much anything here. I just go for the Psychic Fangs, but they are going to run because at this point the win condition is there. And uh, that is going to do it for the game. It's still a really fun match. This team has some fun shenanigans with it. And Quick Feet Jolteon is the truth. Thank you for watching.